Alright, what's up guys? I'm back with another video. This is going to be the fifth video in our series for creating Super Mario Bros. Um, so I'm super excited for today's tutorial. We're going to be building the window and then we're going to be rendering the background. So we'll finally be able to see the the window for our game and something interesting um, as opposed to last time which was just the the FPS and, and the uh, ticks per second. So yeah, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go to our Package Explorer and our Super Mario Bros. folder. We want to open up the source and um, let's create a new file um, for our window. So we're going to create a new package first. Um, remember the package is just a way to organize, or you can think of it as a way to organize your files. So we're going to create a package called com game and then graphics. And so this is going to be a package where we store all of our graphics related things, anything that renders the screen, um, the camera eventually, and so um, that's what this will be for. And let's go ahead and finish that. And in here, let's right click the new graphics um, package and let's create a new class here. And let's go ahead and name it windows.java. And we can stick with all these default settings and we can click finish. All right, so now we have our Windows class. And like I said before, this is going to be the class that holds the code for generating the frame. And um, it will be a very simple file. Um, so yeah, so we'll get right into um, writing the code for this file. So let's start by creating a couple um, variables here. So private J frame frame and private dimension size. And we, let's um, go ahead and hover over this and import these from the Java library. And so a J frame is sort of, um, it's going to be the frame or the window that holds our, our game. So it'll be a window and, and you'll see it render um, in a little bit. And this dimension is just, um, it's a dimension, it's a, a, an object that holds a width and a height. And we're going to need that so that we can pass it into our frame so that we can set the size for, for our frame. And let's create a constructor for this Windows class. So go ahead and write public window and we'll pass in four variables. So int width, int height, a string title, and a game game. And let's see. Okay, so I was missing a, an S there. And inside here, um, <clears throat> let's start by initializing our size and our frame um, variables. So let's do size equals new dimension. And let's pass in the width and the height um, from a constructor. Oh, sorry. This should be width, not weight. And under that, let's initialize our frame. So frame equals new J frame and title. 
And now we're going to set a couple settings. So let's do that here. So frame dot set preferred size to size frame dot set maximum size to size and frame dot set minimum size to size. So what these configuration settings do, um, so this first one sets the preferred size. So right when the frame renders, it's going to be set to that size. The maximum and minimum size um, set it to exactly what it what it says the the maximum and the minimum size for the frame and setting it all to the same size will prevent it from changing size when we um, when we change the display or when we try to um, expand the the window or the JFrame so we're going to keep it all at a consistent size and below this, let's do frame dot set default close operation and j frame dot exit on close. Now what this does is it sets the functionality for when we click the X in the top right corner of our j frame and what we want to do when we click that X is we want to exit. Um, so basically, we exit when we click the, the the X in the corner. And below that, let's do frame dot set resizable to false. Um, so this prevents us from changing the size of the frame. Um, and let's do frame dot set location relative to and let's pass in null here <clears throat> so what this does is it sets the frame to the center of the screen um, right when it loads and let's do frame dot add game so this adds um, the game to our frame um, and at the end let's do frame dot set visible to true and this makes it so that we can see the frame setting it false would make the frame invisible okay so let's save that and um, let's see. Oh, so we have an error here. Right, so we have to import the game class. Um, and this game class is what we created uh, last time. So you also, you would also notice that there's an error in this add. And the reason why we have that is because um, we haven't extended the, the game class yet. Um, so this frame.add expects a, a canvas or something that extends canvas to be passed in. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's save this. Let's go back to our game class. So in this game class, we want to go ahead and extend canvas. So extends canvas and save that and let's import this and save that and once you save it you'll notice that the error in the windows is gone um, because now the game class extends the canvas uh, when it gets passed into this frame.add it's now it's now valid so in this game class let's go ahead and um, create an instance of this window that we just created. So let's scroll down to the initialize method and let's go ahead and create the new window. So new window 
And let's create a couple constants at the top um, that will pass into our window. Um, so let's see. Let's do a private static final string and we'll call that name and we'll set it to the name of our game which is going to be Super Mario Bros. And let's create a another constant for our window width and window height. So let's go ahead and do private static. Um, all right, let's do private, uh, yeah, private static final int and window width. And let's set that to 960 pixels. And let's do private static final int window height. And let's set that to 720. And so these are just typical values that are used um, when creating games. But feel free to change that to whatever you want. So now let's scroll down here and pass in those constants that we just created.